Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today I'm adding to our sewing snacks library again with four more quick sewing tips for you. And at the end of this video, I also have a bonus product comparison. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community. So the table of contents for today's sewing snack is that we're going to talk about uh, details about my invisible zipper foot. I still get lots of questions about that. I'm going to give you some tips about shortening the long lace sleeves we see so much of right now. And I'm also going to give you some hints on what to do with a cone of thread that has gotten tangled. And I also have a little DIY hack for uh, a bobbin winder thread holder. Just wait and see, it'll make sense. And then at the end, I wanna do a shears comparison. So here's what I still get asked about quite a bit. I don't really sew with an all-purpose foot. I have high contrasted this and turned it black and white so you can see it. I like to sew with an invisible zipper foot. Now the ones that come with the commercial machines like I use, the Juki, um, it's a left and a right foot and you actually like switch them out. So you don't have one foot that handles both sides of the zipper. So this is the right zipper foot that's being pictured. The reason why you see me use this foot so often is, as you can see, I can get very, very close to what I'm working on. So here I'm sewing on the tool really close to the lace, and it's not a problem. Links to these parts in the description down below. Now let's talk about these long lace sleeves we're seeing a lot of lately. As you can see with this sleeve, it's got the eyelash on the end, but it's not an applique piece on the end. This is a solid piece of lace. So we're basically gonna have to make an applique out of it. Your other choice is you could shorten the sleeve and then add a little swing lace that has an eyelash to it. Um, but I prefer in this case to go ahead and make the applique. Now, depending on your bride's budget, of course, the right thing to do would be to take out that strip of button looping and all the buttons, remove all that, um, cut around your lace to make the applique, and then replace all that. But I'm going to show you a shortcut because I'm sure we all already know the long, correct way. Um, but if your bride just doesn't have the budget for that um, and wants you to do it a little bit quicker, you can actually take that the whole strip of button looping and the buttons. You can just leave those intact and cut around them so that when you move this up like a cuff, everything is just plug and play, it's ready to go, and you can just sew that strip down that has the button looping and the buttons on it, um, and it sews together beautifully, as long as like you use the zipper foot that I was showing that allows you to get super close when you sew. Um, and you sew that nub down that's at the top where the loops and the buttons meet, it can, it can be quite flush between your sewing technique and your pressing. So a lot of my brides opt for this rather than the extra time consuming way of kind of reinventing the wheel. So again, this is going to be up to your personal taste as a seamstress and also your clientele. This is definitely want, something you want to have a discussion about, but I've got this moved up and pinned. I tried it on her and this length fits her perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this under my machine and use my applique stitch or free motion stitch that I have demoed in many of my videos. And I'm going to sew this down, press it super well, and it's going to have a very clean look to it. Now we've all seen this a time or two. The thread has come unlooped at the top of the cone. And so if ever you try to use this cone of thread for like hand stitching or anything like that, it's just, you're gonna keep grabbing the wrong thing. So when I have a cone that's misbehaving, I just throw it on the bobbin winder. Speaking of bobbin winder, hot glue a little clothespin onto your table um, and that way, I know you've all had this happen when you start winding the bobbin, that little tail of thread gets jerked out, um, and next thing you know, you look over and you haven't wound your bobbin. Well, with this, you're just going to 
um, hook your tail of thread into that little mini clothespin and it's going to wind your bobbin for you. So now you've dealt with two problems. Um, you no longer have to deal with your tangled up cone. The bobbin winder is going to deal with that and this clothespin is going to hold things for you so that when you start to sew, you can cleanly wind the bobbin. Next up, product comparison. I'm going to show you the 9-inch shears. Up top is the Mundial. Below it is the Wiss. So these are the Wiss inlaid. So I want you to look at that nut, how it sunk down in there. Very low profile shears. These are lighter weight, but they're still heavy duty enough for a commercial environment. And right here are the Mundials. And that has the nut, which some people prefer because it's easier to adjust the tension of the shears. I hope this is helped you all of these tips and this comparison please don't forget hit like that thumbs up button share us with all of your sewing friends on social media and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you're new to us my channel trailer is coming up next I know what you're looking for you've been sewing for years but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing but there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.